All right, so let's start off with a super simple biscuits and gravy. And when I say simple, I mean you can make the whole thing front to back in less than 30 minutes. For the biscuits, we're making cream biscuits, which means combining two cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon baking powder, a half teaspoon baking soda, and a half teaspoon kosher salt. Thoroughly tiny whisking to ensure homogeneity before adding the sole liquid ingredient, one and a half cups of heavy cream. Then we're gonna give this mixture a gentle but thorough paddling. We wanna make sure that everything's evenly combined, but we don't wanna over mix, which will result in gluten development, which will result in tough biscuits. At some point, your rubber spatula is going to become useless and you're going to want to knead this by hand for about a minute, just until you have a smooth ball of dough and no dry patches remain. Then, no lazing about, this guy's immediately getting rolled out on a generously floured work surface. You can make them on the thicker or thinner side, but generally we're shooting for a thickness of about half to a quarter inch. And look at that, mine rolled out into a heart, which, fun fact, is where your biscuits and gravy ends up. Anyway, we are utilizing an fluted biscuit cutter to cut ourselves some two and a half inch fluted biscuits spaciously arranging them on a parchment lined baking sheet as we go. Then we're popping these into a preheated 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for 15 to 20 minutes, removing once doubled in height, golden brown, and ready to be brushed down with butter. I'm also gonna sprinkle these with some flaky finishing salt for a nice added salty crunch. And there you have it, the easiest biscuits in the world. And now for the easiest sausage gravy in the world, we're squeezing about a half a pound of breakfast sausage out of their casings and into a preheated high-walled saucepan. Breaking up as we brown them, utilizing a potato masher if we got and once browned and cooked through, it's time to make our gravy. Your breakfast sausage might have given up some fat, but it ain't enough. I'm adding one tablespoon of butter. You might need more or less, but you're shooting for about two tablespoons worth of fat in the pan. The counterpart to the two tablespoons of flour that we're going to sprinkle over everything. Mix that around and cook it over medium heat for about one minute until it forms a blonde pasty roux that we're going to use to thicken one cup of milk. Whisk constantly and add it a little splash at a time, waiting until the mixture is smooth before adding any more. This is going to prevent a lumpy gravy. Once all the milk is added, we're bringing to a simmer and cooking for two to three minutes over medium-low heat until the desired thick gravy-like consistency is achieved. We're seasoning to taste with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. I say to taste because who knows how salty or peppery your breakfast sausage is. Then we're grabbing our still toasty warm biscuits, stacking them up on a plate, and smothering them in our steaming hot sausage gravy. And there you have it, friends, the easiest biscuits and gravy in the world. So easy that you could make them in half an hour, first thing in the morning, before you've had your coffee, with a hangover. But it doesn't taste quick. It tastes very, very homemade. About as good, if not better, than anything you could get at your local greasy spoon. I would induct it into the Clean Plate Club, but I'm trying to save room for our next batch. The advanced version that starts with making our own breakfast sausage. You know, I wish that there was a YouTube channel with a guy that makes sausage out of anything and everything. Maybe with a mustache and a voice like Peter Griffin, but sadly no such YouTube channel exists. Anywho, for our breakfast sausage, we've got three pounds of fatty pork butt, which we're going to trim and cut into one inch cubes. And then to bring some smoky bacon flavor, how about some bacon? I got one pound of the real thick cut stuff here that I'm likewise going to slice into one inch pieces. Then I'm going to toss everybody together, sort of like a pork salad, and start spacing everybody out evenly on a parchment lined baking sheet. We don't want them to be touching too much or to be too crowded, so uh, why don't we make it two parchment lined baking sheets? which is headed into the freezer for 15 to 20 minutes or until firm around the edges. This is gonna make the meat easier to grind. As will a fully frozen meat grinder. Keep all your metal parts stowed in the deep freeze for at least 30 minutes before commencing to grinding. I'm using a relatively coarse grinding plate because I want a sausage with a little bit of texture to it. Once everything is assembled and functioning according to manufacturer specifications, it's time to grind. You wanna to try to be putting a consistent amount of bacon in with the cubed pork. This will ensure that it is evenly distributed throughout the salad. Sausage. Now I made this huge recipe because breakfast sausage freezes very well. But for all the seasonings, I'm going to describe them to you per pound of pork. So if you just want to go to the grocery store and grab a pound of ground pork, you can do that and it'll work just fine. So I got all the ground pork spread out on a rim baking sheet. And now per pound of meat, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons fresh sage, one teaspoon fresh rosemary, one teaspoon fresh thyme, one teaspoon light brown sugar, one quarter teaspoon garlic powder, an optional quarter teaspoon red pepper flake, one eighth of a teaspoon freshly grated nut meg, one quarter teaspoon ground fennel, one teaspoon kosher salt, and three quarters of a teaspoon freshly ground black pepper. Sprinkled as evenly as possible over the meat and then using gloved hands, mixing until homogenous. Now I am making a huge batch here, but raw breakfast sausage does freeze beautifully, thus simplifying future batches of biscuits and gravy should the mood strike you. But before we make any kind of anything, we need to test the sausage to make sure that it's well seasoned. As you can see, I'm putting way too much care into pressing out a patty for some reason, which I'm going to fry up with a little bit of butter 
so I can taste the sausage and make sure that everything's up to spec. Might as well go ahead and plate it up nice and tuck a napkin in under our chin. This is, after all, no ordinary sausage. And give it a taste just to make sure the getting's good. And if it's not, this is your chance to add more salt or herbs or whatever the sausage needs. And once your sausage needs are met, it's time to make biscuits, the best biscuits ever, courtesy of America's Test Kitchen. In a large bowl, we are combining 15 ounces of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, four teaspoons baking powder, half teaspoon baking soda, and one and a half teaspoons kosher salt. Give them a tiny whisking until they are homogenous. And then from the freezer, we are retrieving two sticks or eight ounces of fully frozen butter, which we're gonna grate into the dry ingredients by virtue of the large holes of a cheese grater. Give that a little toss, preferably with gloves on so you don't melt the butter to make sure that every piece is coated in flour and that it's evenly distributed throughout before making a little well and adding one and a quarter cups of cold buttermilk. Then using a rubber spatula, we're mixing everybody together until it just kind of comes together into a shaggy ball of dough, which we're gonna turn out onto a generously floured work surface and begin the process of lamination. That is stretching and folding all the little pieces of butter, creating the desirable flaky layers in our end biscuits. Generously flouring everything, we are gently rolling this out to a rectangle about 12 by nine inches. Then using a bench scraper, we are folding it into thirds like a letter or informational pamphlet. Then we're reflowering our work surface rotating the dough 90 degrees and doing it all over again, a grand total of five times. Not only is this going to create all those wonderful layers of butter, it's going to turn our dough into a soft, pliable, workable pastry dough, which after its final fold, we're going to pat into a rectangle, wrap tightly in plastic wrap, and fridge for at least 30 minutes up to overnight. Side note, you can absolutely make this recipe in a food processor. Just process together all the dry stuff and use the shredding plate to quickly and conveniently dispense with your butter. From there, it's the exact same procedure and the exact same outcome the best damn biscuits I've ever had. But the next step is crucial if you want them to turn out right. As they say, sharp edges make for sharp, uh, biscuits. After this guy's stint in the fridge, he's being generously floured and rolled out into a rectangle about 10 by 6 inches, which, and this is the important part, we're going to use our sharpest blade to make clean cuts, first trimming off the edges and then cutting into six individual biscuits. Any pinching or crappy cutting and your biscuits won't rise as well or as evenly. So don't pick them up with your grubby fingers, use a spatula or a bench scraper to make sure that you don't pinch the edges. Then these guys are all getting a thorough pre-baked brushing of melted butter and a spray sprinkling of finishing salt before placing into a preheated 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 20 to 25 minutes until doubled in height, golden brown, and triumphant. Then we're letting these guys cool off slightly while we make our sausage gravy. Into the same large saucepan goes about a pound of our homemade sausage, which we're going to cook and mash over medium-high heat until it's lightly browned and cooked through. Then we're lowering the heat and adding an optional tablespoon of freshly chopped sage, butter if necessary, and the usual two tablespoons of flour to make our pasty roux. Then same procedure as before, cook it for about a minute before slowly adding one cup of milk. Adding in little splashes and whisking constantly so as to prevent lumps, and then cooking for two to three minutes until the desired consistency is achieved. Season to taste with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper, and I like to add just a little freshly grated nutmeg. It always plays nice in a white sauce, not to mention with pork and fresh herbs. Once that's all done and seasoned to your liking, it's time to serve. You can just pour this straight over your biscuit, but I kind of like to break mine in half like a Pillsbury Grand. Pile the sausage gravy high on the bottom half and top it with the top half. Almost like a hilarious sandwich that can only be eaten with a fork and knife. And to that end, let's dig in. And I know that this is a very complicated iteration of what is normally a very simple recipe, but your effort will pay dividends. It's spicy, it's herby, it's smoky, it's porky. The biscuit is rich and flaky and come on, clean plate club for sure. I'm glad I saved room.